Hello, and it's Raymond Praise time again. And, hon, today we are going to feature you That's on right. the program. That's right. I am talking today about the power of your thoughts. You know, uh, thoughts are very powerful right. um, to us because it's before we speak something, we think it. And, um, you know, it uh, will affect the decisions that we make. Um, it'll affect uh, how we respond to. If you don't think it through correctly, you make a bad decision. That's right. That's right. Uh, it also, um, how we respond when we're sick. Right. Uh, you know, it's so important. And isn't it funny how that uh, it seems like it's always negative thoughts that come yeah. to us? And the Word of God tells us to take our thoughts into captivity. That's no, right. Don't, hey, don't think those thoughts. That's right. And so, you know, it's so important instead of thinking the negative, you know, the enemy brings negative thoughts to right, us. Right. And uh, it's so important instead of thinking those negative thoughts to always fill that with the thoughts that God uh, brings to us. Yeah, the Word of God. That's right. Because like God always brings positive thoughts. Yeah. And of course, as you know, my favorite scripture, as I've repeated many times, Philippians 4 13, I can do all things through right. Christ who strengtheneth me. Right. And so I want to encourage you today uh, listen to my message, and I know that it will minister to you. Proverbs 23 7 in the New King James Version says, For as he thinks, in his heart, so is he. Now, I want to read Proverbs 4.23 to you, and you, you will not have this translation, probably unless you have a U version. It's the good news translation, Proverbs 4.23, but you can write it down. And it says, be careful how you think. Your life is shaped by your thoughts. Be careful how you think. Your life is shaped by your thoughts. Now, experts tell us that most of us, with our mind thinks between 60,000 to 80,000 thoughts a day. Can you believe that? I mean, some, some of this research I did, I, it was incredible to me. To think that I think 60,000 to 80,000 thoughts a day. I didn't know that my mind was that broad, you know. So let's take the lower number, 60,000. That means that 2,500 thoughts go through your mind every hour. It all, and I'm a math person. It also means that 42 thoughts go through your mind every minute. 42 thoughts. Now, I will tell you, from the time that I was little, my mother would always tell me, okay, you just need to quieten your mind. You just need to quieten your mind. You just need to clear your mind, she called it. You just need to clear your mind, clear your mind. Well, of course, I really didn't know what she meant until all of a sudden years later that so many thoughts were going through my mind that I realized if I didn't quit clear my mind and if I didn't quit thinking about some of those things that I was thinking about, that I was going to go crazy. And so I had to learn to clear my mind. Now, you know, now one of the times that it seemed like that my mind would just go bonkers on me is when I would lay down to go to sleep. Anybody done that? Been there, done that? Oh, man, you know, I would lay down to go to sleep and uh, 
I would either have, now, you know, these were positive thoughts. Maybe I was fixing to have a van, and I'd think about all of those things that, uh, that I could do. Or, and, and that's good, but sleep is not the time that you need to be thinking about that. But most of the time, what would happen when I was trying to go to sleep, it just seemed like things were going on at work, you know, employee problems, all kinds of they're, they're getting, they're uh, not, they're upset with each other, all kinds of things. Maybe somebody didn't complete their project right or did it wrong or whatever. Most of the time at night, that's what I would be thinking about because I had left work, gone home, you know, tried to not think about it. But then when everything was silent in the house and I'm trying to go to sleep, I'm thinking about it, okay? I can't go to sleep. So what I do, I toss and I turn and I toss and I turn. And my husband, oh my goodness, he can just go to sleep like that. I don't think men think about anything. <laughs> I mean, you know, he can go to sleep up teen times before I ever go to sleep once. So I, I remember this one time, this has been years ago, this one time, I mean, I had tossed and I turned and I was thinking about all those issues at work and I tossed and I turned and I was looking at the clock and it was, I mean, I was doing this for like three and a half hours. Well, the longer I'm doing this, the louder he's snoring. <laughs> so this is just making me any, even madder. And so I am just like, you know, finally, I can't go to sleep at all. And I'm thinking, well, if I can't go to sleep, then I'm just going to wake him up. Because, <laughs> you know, the Bible says, bear ye one another's burdens. <laughs> so I thought he needed to bear my burden with me. <laughs> so I woke him up. And so I said to him, you've been sleeping, but I can't sleep. Do you know this is going on at work and this is going on at work and this one hasn't done this and this one hasn't done this, you know? And I just spill everything out on him, you know? So he gets up. He starts pacing the floor, you know? Oh, well, I didn't know this and I didn't know this. And, and the minute he started getting up and pacing the floor, plop, I went right to sleep. <laughs> negative thoughts out of my mind and put them on somebody else's. <laughs> oh my goodness. But you know, many times our mind jumps from one thought to another, you know, kind of like a monkey. Have you ever seen a monkey? They jump from tree to tree to tree. Well, that's kind of the way our thoughts do sometimes, you know, and I, uh, and it goes from one thing to, the, to another. For example, you might say, well, you know, you think, this is your thought. I need to have a serious conversation with my coworker. And I'm just not sure how to, to, to do it. So, I mean, that's a thought. I mean, uh, you're going to have a serious conversation. You don't know how to do it. Not, you know, it's, I mean, it's not a real stressful thing, but all of a sudden... You know, that thought goes from this. Ah, this person's not going to like what I have to say. And then you think, ah, she's so difficult. I just don't know. You know, she, her, her lid may just come off when I tell her what I have to say. And then it goes from, nobody supports me here. <laughs> ah, ah, this situation is hopeless. I just don't think they're going to understand. I'm never going to get heard. I don't like conflict. Oh, what if I tell them and they don't receive what I'm telling them? And all of a sudden, you know, she tells my employer and I, my employer gets upset and I lose my job. And now how am I going to make my house payment? <laughs> now your thoughts 
You know, I mean, we laugh at that because it seems pretty extreme. But do you realize that I don't care who we are, I don't care how long we've been a Christian, do you realize that the enemy brings thoughts to you every day? He's no respecter of persons, okay? True life example, okay? It seemed like this time of year I've made all my appointments, you know, my checkup appointments and all those things that you have to do once a year. So I call and I get in to have a mammogram last week. So I go to have my annual mammogram, you know, and I go there to have it. I leave there. The devil says, you know, that mammogram might not come out right. There may be issues. What are you going to do? You know, you'll probably get that result right before women's conference. And what if it's a bad report? And you've got to have that women's conference. What are you going to do? Real, I'm, I'm not making this up, okay? Real thoughts. You know, every time you start writing a sermon, the devil just, you know, brings... Well, you know what I said? I just started laughing at him. I, I said, enemy, you, I know where those thoughts are coming from, and they're coming from you. They're not coming from God. And so I'm going to cast down those thoughts, take every thought into captivity. And you know what what I thought was so appropriate today? In the mail was my report. Everything is awesome. No changes. Everything is perfect. We'll see you in a year. But you see how those thoughts can just bombard your mind. And so, you know, pretty soon you've worked yourself up in a frenzy. You're stressed out. You're aggravated. You're fearful. When none of the things that the enemy brought to you is playing out the way that he's bringing them to you. The power of your thoughts. The biggest battle of a Christian will ever face occurs between the two ears. Your mind, your mind. If we can't win the battle in our minds, we will never win the battle in the world. You know, when we accept Christ as our Savior, our spirits are instantly, you know, transformed. But, you know, Paul talks much about the mind. What do we have to do? We have to transform our mind because that is not instantly Renewed. Philippians 2 5 says, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Romans 8 6 says, For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. But now, the devil always loves to take advantage of a mind that is ignorant or is moved by emotions. A mind that is ignorant or moved by emotions. Psalm 119, 105 says, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet, what? And a light unto my path. And so, when you fill your mind with the word of God, that word is going to be a lamp. That word is going to... Help to destroy all of those negative thoughts that you have. The thief's number one area to work on is our mind. Satan makes that his chief point of attack upon our lives. Satan seeks to bind and blind us to the things of God. John 10.10, you probably know it. 
In the New Living Translation, it says the thief's purpose is to steal and kill and destroy. My purpose is to give them a rich and satisfying life. God wants to give you a rich and satisfying life. But guess what? In order to have that rich and satisfying life, we are going to have to take control of our thoughts. We're going to have to take control of our minds. 2 Corinthians 10, 5. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God. And, underline this, bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Do you realize that Thoughts affect our emotional state. Thoughts affect our health. Thoughts influence what we do or say to people. Sometimes, you know, we haven't thought good thoughts and then we say things to people that later we regret. But we dwell on them so much that they came out. No matter the situation or circumstance, everything we do, do you realize stems from a thought? It's kind of heavy stuff. But everything we do stems from a thought. A thought turns into feelings. The feelings turn into action. Action turns into results. Positive or negative? If you, if you think depressing thoughts, what are you going to become? Depressed. If you think critical thoughts, what are you going to become? If you think positive thoughts, what's going to happen? You're going to think positive. If you think happy thoughts, what's going to happen? You're going to be happy. You're going to laugh. Our thoughts affect our emotions, as I said before. You know, you can't be happy until you first think happy thoughts. You, you know, sometimes uh, you'll, something funny will happen. Well, it's, you know, it becomes a thought, and then you think about it. I've thought about things of the past, and it was really funny, and I start laughing. And my husband will say, what are you laughing at? I was saying, oh, I was just thinking about the time, you know. Your thoughts can produce laughter. But also, you know, your thoughts can produce discouragement. Our thoughts affect our bodies. According to research, and this is astounding and it makes us realize how much that we have to take control of our thoughts. Research says that 80% of our thoughts are negative. That's a high percentage. Our bodies are stimulated by our thoughts. Negative thoughts produce, negative thoughts will zap your mental energy. They'll cause high blood pressure. It'll cause digestive orders. Have you ever, you know, thought a negative thought and your stomach started hurting you? Yeah, I have. Negative thoughts will even upset your hormone balance. It will damage your immune system. It will decrease your lifespan. It will deplete your brain of all the chemicals that you need for the happy thoughts. That's what negative thoughts will do to you. Positive thoughts will increase your lifespan. It'll strengthen your, your, uh, your uh, immunity system. We found, the medical uh, Phil has found that if, you, if their patient has positive thoughts during surgery, they recover faster. If you have negative thoughts, it's, you're not going to recover as fast. With positive thoughts, you have a lower rate of depression. 
a lower rate of distress. You, are, you have better immunity against colds and other symptoms. Better, you have, when you have positive thoughts, you have better coping skills during critical times, hardship times. Let me say again, we choose our own thoughts. Do you realize that no one can make you think anything? You choose what you dwell on. You choose what you dwell on. You know, just because the enemy may put a negative thought in your head, you choose whether to dwell on that or whether to throw it away. And you may think, well, you know, I, you're not bothered with the kind of thoughts that I am or that I've had or I've gone through. In 1984, whenever the doctors told us that our 13-year-old son had a brain tumor and then one knock of the head it can mean his death. You can imagine the thoughts that flooded through my mind. And yet I had to start thinking the things, the thoughts of God. That he would live and not die. And declare the works of God. I had to think the thoughts of God that he's healed, he's whole. That however method that God uses to bring that to pass, it will come to pass. I had to choose to think positive. But I had to rise above that. Don't feel sorry for me. I'm just trying to endeavor to help you to understand that each and every one of us have to deal with thoughts. I had to rise above that and say, God, you are all sufficient. You'll give me wisdom. You'll give us wisdom. You'll provide whatever. Thank you, God, that you have it under control. God, you're going to take care of it all. You know my desires. And so, God, thank you that you are faithful to perform exactly what you said that you would perform. I trust that you enjoyed the message today and uh, for you to see just how powerful our thoughts are. So I encourage you, always think positive things. Even though the enemy may bring the negative thought to you, just replace that with the positive thoughts of the Word of God. And as you do, you'll find out that the negative things will just not come to you as often as they used to, and you'll always respond with positive thoughts. Hey. Yes? I want to remind everybody that this is the last week. That's right. That you can get our special offer, uh, Create the World You Want to See, mm -hmm. and if I can... You, you can, can yes. your CDs. A savings of $13. Yes. I always like bargains. All right. Hey, don't forget September 13th through the 16th, we're going to be in Glenwood Springs, Colorado yes. at the New Creation Church at 44761 Highway 6 and 24 with Pastors Mark and Tasha Bentliff. And the Sunday night service uh, starts at 6, 6 p.m. That's right. And then Monday through Wednesday, 1030 and 7 a.m. 7 hey, p.m. 7 p.m. What's that's the matter right. with me? <laughs> it's 1030 a.m. and 7 p.m. Oh, that's where that's I got right. mixed up. Okay, that's right. Well, hey, I make mistakes too, okay? But I want to talk to all of you guys. You need to get your ladies to kindle the flame. At September 24th through the 26th, Lynette will be speaking, my daughter Denise Burns, Patsy Caminetti, Eric, Eric or McCrutchen. And through September the 15th, you can get the early, early bird special. So go right there to rhema.org slash KTF 
and get your wife registered and get her down here, it will benefit her greatly and you too. That's right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, don't forget, you know, we have Rama Bible Church, Oklahoma City. Right. That's 8921 Northwest Expressway. We meet every Sunday night at 6 p.m. And then, of course, Rama Bible Church here in Broken Era. Yeah, and, and our, here from the campus here in Broken Era, they're live streamed every Sunday at 10. Yes. And every Sunday night at 6, 6 p.m. And every Wednesday at 7 p.m., the yes. hour of power. You can watch us there at rhema.tv. Yes. Well, I want to thank all of you that are partnering with us because of your loyal partnership. We are able to keep this broadcast going all over the world. And I want to thank you for your prayers too because that's what a board partner club member does. They send an offering of whatever it is they can send yes. each month. And when it all comes together, we're able to accomplish a whole lot for God. And you pray for us as we travel all over the world preaching the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so thank you for being our partners. And for you that have maybe just watched us for the first time or you've watched us a few times, hey, we would welcome you to become a partner with us. So you can go to rhema.org slash WPC and all the information is there. So we want to thank all of you for helping us to bring hope, hope help, help, and, and healing, healing to, to the, the world. world. Kindle the Flame is coming up really soon, September the 24th through the 26th, right here on the Rama campus, right here in Broken Era. Along with myself, of course, as speakers, we also have Patsy Caminetti, Erica McCrutchen, and I'm so happy to welcome my daughter, Denise Burns. You can register online at rhema.org slash KTF, or you can register by phone or by mail. I look forward to seeing you in September. If perhaps that you get to a point in your life and, and it seems like you can't get over to the other side, hey, take the hand of the Lord as I do and quote, literally quote the scriptures, I can do all things through Christ who strengtheneth me. I quote that every day. But you have a purpose. You have a destiny. Never forget that you have a calling. If I Can, You Can, an inspirational and encouraging three CD series by Lynette Hagen. Yes, you can do it. What kind of world do you want to live in? Create the world you want to see. In this life-changing book, Kenneth W. Hagen shows us that by speaking the Word of God in faith, we begin to create the world we want to see. Both the book and the CDs can be yours today for only $19.95. Just call toll-free 1-888-PRAISE-8 or visit rhema.org anytime, day or night. Thank you for watching Rhema Praise with Ken and Lynette Hagen. Ken, Lynette, and Rhema Bible Training College are committed to reaching the entire world with the gospel of Jesus Christ and training laborers for the end-time harvest. If you have prayer requests or would like more information, please write, call, or visit our website. Thank you for being with us today and for your faithful support. And remember, there is hope, help, and healing for a hurting world. <laughs>